so much for all that you do and bring um, to our club. And I think, um, you know, as we move away from the current scenario over the next couple of years, I think it's, it's a really important one as we get our on-field, um, which is clearly going to be growing um, into a better position. I think we've also got to go on a bit of a journey to make sure that we're um, not just growing our home support, but making sure that we're growing our interstate support as well. So to Alana's point, um, we, we love what you do. We love what you bring to the club and thank you for that. And most importantly, we need to listen to you and come up with ideas to refresh and, and energise and grow uh, that supporter base in the other states. Like I, I, I think I can say, and I, I tell them, I love you guys. Like, it's so easy. Um, you, you rock up to game, you make the banner, you make it so easy to deal with. Um, every, I mean, you know, every time that I speak to any of you, it, it's like we've known each other forever, even though we don't see each other. There's, there's absolutely a role for um, the Melbourne members and interstate as well. So outside of, member, uh, outside of Melbourne, we have a huge supporter base in South Australia. How do you think COVID will have a massive impact on AFL? How do I think it'll have a massive impact? I think it's already having a massive impact mm. and I would be hoping that next year and the year after it has less and less impact and um, hopefully we can all get back to going out and filling up the stadium and shouting for all our Frio team members out there running around. That would be the thing that I would like best of all and I reckon you might like that best of all too. In the, the last 12 months, you know, Simon's uh, built a really solid connection um, with all of the staff and, and the playing group. And he spent um, three and a half weeks in the hub um, last time round, which was really good opportunity for him to connect. And um, Justin, as we know, has just done a, a great job connecting with all the players. So, you know, I think with staff <coughs> changes um, and even playing group changes, it's sort of unfortunate that it's going to um, disrupt uh, a bit of that. But on the other hand, I guess there's really every other club um, in the competition has got the same issues coming at it. So we're not, you know, it doesn't take away from the, the kind of human toll and, and the disruption, but you probably take a little bit of comfort that all of the other 17 clubs have got the same issues to deal with. And, I almost think because we had such big disruption in 2019 with the change of CEO and um, senior yeah. coach, to some degree, we're already in that change environment. So, um, you know, I think it helps with the way that we are maybe a little bit more agile and a little bit more flexible and used to the changes that have been imposed on us with COVID. So, you know, that, that would be my hope. Um, but I, I think also too, we're not, we're not taking anything for granted either. We know that um, it's, it's going to uh, be disruptive, but we've just got to work our way through it and get to the other side. And then, um, you know, hopefully by later in the year, we're in a position where we go, okay, this is this, is this. this is the uh, squad size, this is where the staffing changes are at and uh, draw a line underneath it. And then we all regroup and go forward. And I certainly had made a point that um, I'd be pretty aggressive against any changes that were negative around AFLW because, you know, we're really just um, on a journey there. Our girls, as we all know, just were fantastic. And they, you know, they're, they're saying, well, okay, we were whatever we were, seven or eight zip or whatever it was. And, and th they've just said, well, right, um, when we start in 21, we're just continuing um, on from where we left off. And... We had them, Jan and I had them over at our place for the best and fairest, and um, they're just a delight. They're, they bring so much to our club. They're fantastic. And particularly mm. when you can't, um, you bring in a new game plan and you can't play 18 on 18 contact to sort of get that game planned, you know, methodology um, practice. So you're only able to do it really in your lines and the limitations on that. But straight from the get go, he said, well, you know, it's about, their fitness, strength and conditioning, it's about the game plan and it's about skill development. So it, it's, it's clearly got to be in those buckets and 
each area has got to be worked on uh, in parallel. So that that's his mantra, and he's followed that through, you know, to the best of his ability. There. Most importantly, we took the opportunity first up for it to be a really positive thing that we were doing, and the same understanding this time round. The benefit this time round, it's only for three weeks too. So there's not a lot of anxiety there for them to um, be concerned about how long and how it's going to work. They know how it'll work and it actually is for that kind of three week period and, and they know what they're getting into. So I think they're going to be in a, a pretty um, positive, pretty happy place and uh, also very good that we've got our CEO going back up to spend time with them as well because that just gives you a little bit of um, additional management executive over the top of the footy bubble just to kind of steer the ship a little bit as well. Yeah.